Welcome to 2024. We're back with QX Financial. Um, welcome to Q to uh, Jonko today. And I am Charity. And we're here today talking about um, the infinite banking concept for 2024. It's a huge thing that, uh, you know, a huge strategy that could be very valuable to so many different consumers. And uh, so we want to kind of break it down for you and talk about different components and why it's so important to your financial plan. So go ahead and take it away, Janko. Thank you, Shirley. Happy 2024 to all of you watching. Uh, so if you have goals for this year, uh, this new year, and one of your goals is to accumulate more capital, be more financially efficient, and overall have more money, you, you don't want to miss this video. You don't want to skip on this concept. Uh, so today is not going to be a full video into becoming your own banker or infinite banking concept. Uh, there's a lot of videos about that on YouTube and social media. By the way, most of them are actually wrong. Uh, so we're going to try to give you the, the actual way that this works. This is something that I do in my own personal finance that I know that Charity does in, in her personal finance. So we don't explain infinite banking. We are living infinite banking. This is something that we do on a consistent basis. So you know, we want to start, we're going to break this explanation in a couple of videos, so make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, so you can continue to get the series of videos, of short videos about infinite banking. But really what, what we are trying to accomplish here, what we're trying to do with clients is to help them understand that when they look at their budget, the, the grand majority of their money is going away in liabilities, car payments, child support payments, uh, rental payments, and so on. And one that money leaves you is gone forever, right? It's, it's an actual financial cost of paying things in cash. Now, we don't think of, that, of it that way, right? We think that when we pay in cash, it's done. But actually, there's a cumulative cost of using cash to pay for liabilities, right? And that's a key concept that we're going to try to explain today that we call opportunity cost, right? One of the many key concepts that we're going to be explaining over this series. So the idea, the idea of infinite banking is to help people recover the value and recover the equity of those very dollars they are using to pay for their liabilities. Like I mentioned, car payments, credit card payments, the RV, the c and so on and so on, right? That's the, the, a key component of the infinite banking concept. Everything you hear about investing and you can do this and that, I will turn that off because that's not really what it was designed to do, right? It's really designed to help you recapture all those dollars that every day are leaving you and they will never make money for you ever again. That is that is its key component or key mission. So as we understand the role of, of, uh, of money in our everyday lives, as we understand how to manage cash flow better uh, through the series of videos that we're going to be putting out there, then infinite banking as a concept is going to start to make more sense and how to actually use it in your everyday life. Like I mentioned, if you go watch TikTok about this or, or Instagram reels or whatever, most of them are exaggerating or misconstruing what IBC is supposed to do, right? So don't fall for that. Let's have a clear and objective conversation about it. So in order to start that conversation, the first key concept that I believe it should be very, very clear to people <laughs> is this concept of opportunity cost, right? What is the true cost of every financial transaction that I engage with? I know this is super basic, but it's a key concept that we have to understand before we can go into explaining why IBC matters. So, Shirley, tell us a little bit about what opportunity cost is, what does that matter, and how can we calculate it? Great. So, when talking about opportunity cost, um, the example that I like to draw upon is thinking about um, buying a car. Uh, it's just something that, that we all have been involved in. We kind of know how it works. Now, when we're thinking very theoretically about going to buy a car, most people are like, well, of course it makes sense to go and buy a car with cash rather than going in and getting a loan. Like that's universally accepted. Yeah, you're going to be able to um, save the money that you would have been spending on um, on your car payments, you're going to save all that interest. So instead of paying that interest to, you know, your bank or whatever, you can kind of keep that um, in your pocket or not spend it. Um, so of course that is normally accepted as the best decision. 
Well, we're going to take this a step farther and say, that is a fantastic decision, but you're still going to have to um, finance this vehicle somehow, whether that's in the time it takes to accumulate that cash or whether it's by, you know, doing it another way. So what we're proposing with the with opportunity cost is that there is actually still a cost to purchasing this car with cash instead of using a concept like infinite banking. So with this car, if you're um, taking this cash and you're going to spend it on this car, by the end of the month, when you look back at your bank statement, that money is going to be gone. You will not have access to that cash any longer. It will no longer be working for you. Um, the opportunity to use that cash is now completely gone. So is it a better decision than going and getting the car loan? Sure. Yeah, of course. But you can still incur a cost by, by buying that car in cash instead of um, using this other method that we're going to teach you about. Exactly right. So so let's backtrack and, and use the example that Shirley was giving us, right? Let's say you have a car payment. Just round number, let's say it's $500 a month, right? That money goes into the car because it leaves your checking account, right? It goes into the financing company, part of its principal, part of it of its interest. That vehicle that you're buying automatically is depreciating. So the value of your $500 goes down as it leaves your account, right? So, so it's true that you're not paying interest, so that's good, but you're buying, you're spending the money in a depreciating asset. There's a third factor that we gotta consider, which is what is the real return that you're not making in those five hundred dollars because you're using the money to pay for that car. In other words, let's say that instead of putting those five hundred dollars into the car, you could put it into a, a U.S. Treasury. Let's just say that is paying four percent. So how much will that be? That will be twenty dollars. So instead of going from 500 to zero, you will be going to four, from 500 to 520. So that 4% equity for the rest of your life, you just gave it up. So if you're watching this video, you want to have a little bit of fun. Maybe we can put a link to an investment calculator at the bottom of the video. Uh, take $20 at 5% or $500 at 4% for the next 30 years and see how much that is. It's going to be a hundred. It's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is opportunity cost. It's not just what you didn't earn today. It's also what you're not earning tomorrow, the day after that, for the rest of your life. So usually the argument that we get at this point is, "Well, Janko, but I need the car, though. I mean, it's great that I can make four percent or whatever with my five hundred bucks, but I need to allocate these five hundred dollars into a vehicle because I gotta go work, I gotta take my kids to school, and all of that." So here's a key concept for you. What about if there was a way where I can spend my money when I need to, but yet remain able to earn equity on that very money for the rest of my life? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be a better financial position? And that's the concept of opportunity cost, right? Yes, you're saving by paying for things in cash. Yes, you're, you're, uh, you're gaining utility by using the, the car, because the argument could be made as well that say, hey, I'm going to work and so that car is earning me money. Yeah, you could make that argument as well, but you need to add the financing cost. You may not be financing it with your with interest or with a loan from a bank, but you're financing it with your labor, meaning you have to give up your earnings and the equity of those earnings to be able to purchase that vehicle. This may, this may sound a little convoluted, but it's actually not. It's, it's a very basic concept that we can mathematically, you know, see and see it happen. And most corporations actually function this way, right? They, they, they make sure that when they utilize money, they pay themselves the actual cost of capital. It has to be part of the calculation. But when we bring that down to our everyday budgets as, as regular families, we don't think of the uh, we don't think of the price of capital. We don't think of opportunity costs because we just go work and get a paycheck. But that is only half of the equation. Anything you'd like to add to that, Shirley? No, I agree. If we can identify a way that we can um, that we can uh, take back control of the money that normally would just be leaving our accounts, and if we could take control over the um, accumulation of wealth that, that we could have had on those dollars, that would be a really big game changer.
That's exactly right. And I like the way that the way that you put it, sir. It's critical that we take back control of those dollars. You see, most of us are not wealthy. We're only going to make so much money over our lifetimes. So we either give it away or we start taking control, right? Somebody's going to make the money. Uh, we like I like to say that opportunity cost is like gravity. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. The question is, are you going to be the one profiting from it or is somebody else? Are you going to take control of those liabilities that you have on your budget and turn them into assets like banks do? Or is it going to be a, an ongoing negative number in your balance sheet for the rest of your life? That is the question. And I think that if you guys give us an opportunity to sit down with you and show the math of how that plays out over the next 20, 30, 40 years, you'll be surprised. You'll be shocked how expensive it actually is to buy a car or find the things that we buy every single day. Okay. So let go ahead. Go ahead, Shirley. No, I just said that is absolutely right. Well, uh, like I said, opportunity cost is one of the key concepts when it comes to infinite banking. We're going to continue talking about this in, uh, next week. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't don't miss the series because we're going to go very detailed. And at some point, we're going to show you real numbers of real people that we have worked with so you can see what I actually can do for you. But don't forget that everything has a cost. There's no such a thing as a free lunch, right? Everything carries a cost. The key is to identify it and flip it to your benefit instead of somebody else's. And that's opportunity cost. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. See you next week.